Okay. Um, this is going to be a quick and simple one, but just thought it might be neat to show. So, this is something I've been waiting for. And here we have the new McFly General Mini Board. Um, this is another Serdigo product by the guy that makes the Dream Blaster. And um, yeah, I was lucky enough to um, be in the right form at the right time that I was able to grab one from the very first batch, which there's only 10 of these right now. Though he is already going to make another batch. And um, yeah, as you can see, this thing is pretty small. I'm filling it with the phone today. And, um, and what I've got here is my Korg NS5R MIDI module. Take the cover off. Not the easiest to do with one hand. You notice I've already taken all the screws, which is slightly annoying, but not too bad. Yeah, um, this right here is actually the Dream Blaster X2. And we're going to take you out. So yeah, if you're not confused by some of my recent videos, this is the Dream Blaster X2 here. Um, Basically, it can work in two ways. You can connect the USB up to a computer, which actually you need to do anyway if you want to change the sound bank or mess around with some of its parameters and settings. But And when you hook it up that way, it does work as a standard USB MIDI device. Right by my thumb here, there's also a, um, you know, a value or a sound line output that you can plug in. So you can just hook it up to a normal PC. But the main purpose is to use the uh, Wave Blaster style connector here. Uh, originally, mostly, the product was mostly designed for like PC sound card use. But since I have a whole heap of, you know, things like X68000, MSX, I like to use the uh, Korg NS5R module here because, as you saw, it just has a Wave Blaster compatible header for daughter boards like these. It even has this little pot here is specifically for controlling the volume of just the board itself. So if you're mixing together, like for example, the cord can actually split MIDI channels. So for example, you could send a lot of the MIDI channels to the, like the guitar, the brass, whatever, to the Wave Blaster board, but then have the cord handle the drums or whatever you want to do. So you can mix it that way. It's also a nice module, because over here you can notice there's actually, this is for the power. So if you're like, you need 220 volts, you can just pull this up, plug this in here. So it's a very nice little simple module with a lot of easy customization you can do. So we're gonna give the Dream Blaster X2 here a break and install the McFly, so if you're curious, this is basically a joke, which is why I'm looking forward to it. Um, so I'm filming with the phone here, so it's gonna be a little awkward. Yeah, sorry, I just gotta open this. So this project, the McFly here, was pretty much a joke. Um, if you're familiar with Serdico's other products, uh, he also makes uh, the, the S2, which I don't have one, and it's similar in idea to the X2, but the S2, you can't change the sound bank, it only has one. It's meant to, um, and it's a cheaper product of his. And when he released it, he kind of put up a challenge, like, I dare someone to make um, a Wave Blaster board even smaller. And some guy actually came up with one. And then a few years later, they kind of became friends. And just almost as a joke, now you, he made a batch of these new McFlies, which is uses this, as you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny. Um, compared to the Dream Blaster X2, 
I mean, look at that. That absolutely miniature. Um, so yeah, basically, if you're confused what this is, the one main chip on here is actually a chip basically made to go into cheap Chinese-made MP3 players. Its primary purpose is just a MP3 and OGG decoding. But, strangely enough, it also has a basic GM-compliant sound bank installed in it. I guess so if you were wanted to make a cheap Chinese MP3 player, you could also say, oh yeah, and also it plays MIDI's. Now, as you can probably imagine, it does not particularly sound good. Um, I don't know, I kind of decided I had too many good sounding modules, so I wanted something a bit janky. And, um, yeah, the few demos of this thing that I've heard are... Well, let's just say... If you've been enjoying, like, the very nice samples loaded on this, this thing is about as cheap as it gets. Um, yeah, this first batch is so cheap to make that this was only 20 euros. I think he's already put up a pre-order for a second batch, and he's rated up to 30 euros. But the initial batch of just 10 of these, yeah, that cheap to produce. So, basically, all we gotta do here is just throw it in here, and then hook it all up, and we're ready to hear some tunes. So, I'm just gonna put this in, set it back up, and then just switch to some audio recording, so... Yeah. Just is kind of neat to see how ridiculously tiny. Like, here's the McFly. Then the X2. Just ridiculously tiny. Alright, so... Look forward to some possibly awful sounding games that, yeah. I'm always looking for new ways to listen to games, and I'm not expecting this to sound good, but I do like the idea of having something sounding unique. That's all. <laughs>